You know, I'm glad we did the restaurant and it was a dream that we both had and um, it was amazing to do that and we loved it while we did it, but it, it, the timing was just perfect and I think our business now is more exciting and more what we should be doing at this point in our business and we're still in hospitality, we're still feeding people, we're still cooking, we're still, you know, making people feel happy, but it's just a different, different way of life. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. What if everything you built wasn't the dream you'd imagined? That your dream evolved to be successful, but the cards didn't quite land how you'd expected. But then outside forces, like a pandemic, gave you a chance to let go of what you built, revitalize and re-emerge with a new offering that not only made you feel alive, but became successful and viable too. Willa Arantz is the co-owner of Racine in Orange, New South Wales. Willa, how are you going? I'm really well, thanks. How are you? I'm good. You've had a pretty life-changing year, as many have in the industry, but just leading up to COVID, you guys were about as busy as any business could get. Can you take us back to that time and and what it was like just before the lockdown happened and sort of changed everything for you? Yeah, look, um, we had been, uh, you know, I guess the long part of it is that we, you know, we'd had this little restaurant, it had grown and grown and grown. We opened a bakery, we put a wedding event business in there. um, And, you know, the more you make, the more you need to make, the more you need to be busy. And it's kind of like this... um, I guess a cyclone or a snowball um, when you've got a business like that you know you're just so in it Um, and we were so busy and we had all these staff and you know quite a few times we'd be doing a wedding and then the bakers would be coming in to bake the bread and the restaurant would be busy and full of people and I just look around and go my god it's like an ant's nest in here and I (laughs) it's it's quite it's quite amazing it's a big building too so we had this huge kitchen um, I mean, you've been there, so you know. I don't know if you went in the kitchen, but it's you know, it was that that restaurant. It was probably about a third of the size of the kitchen that wow. we ended up having. So it was huge. And my brother had his wedding. Um, we normally only did 150, but being my brother, we ended up doing 170 for a wedding for his wedding. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and they were meant to be having this beautiful alfresco outdoors wedding. It was in March, about yeah, exactly a year ago, and. Um, They had a rehearsal lunch the day before. On that night of the rehearsal lunch, someone else was having their wedding in the building, in the function space. Um, Then they had their wedding. It was freezing cold, it rained, so we moved it all indoors and we could just squeeze them in. Like, it was full on. And the bakery, you know, being March, Easter was sort of coming up, so we made hot cross buns and wedding cakes and desserts for weddings. It was just, like, it was just insane. And I remember the wedding was unreal. We had the best time. Um... And everyone was kind of touching each other with their elbows and stuff. And then we had the, the you know, it was pretty crazy. We were sort of like, oh, God, is, is um, you know, are we going to be able to have this wedding? Should I call the people? Like my um, sister-in-law's sister was from New York, you know, like everyone had COVID there at that point. So, um, and I was like, should we call people and tell them they can't come? Like my mum had pneumonia, um, which is a whole other thing related to some um stents that she had put in so she was always getting sick so she was really vulnerable and I was like I was mm. actually quite worried about all these people coming in from Sydney and all over the place and New York and London and and I thought oh you know I'll just get through it I'll just get through it just get through it and then the next day we had the post-wedding brunch which of course was the biggest post-wedding brunch we've ever done <laughs> um, <laughs> because it was my brother and everyone like all our staff wanted to make it the best experience possible so it was crazy and I remember being at that brunch and just going I can't even enjoy being here because I'm so stressed about all our staff and how tired they must be and you know everything that's going on I just had this this, I I can't explain it was a gut feeling like this is too much I can't this is not sustainable people are gonna gonna quit or you know I don't Mm. know go to fair work I don't know just it just felt ridiculous and we were all working hard like it wasn't just the staff everyone was like me and Sean and everything so um so that next week everything started to lock down and we had to I had two girls on the events team with me and um two full-time girls 
And we just had to ring all these brides and say, look, I'm really sorry, <laughs> you know, your wedding is going to have to be postponed. And that, you know, that was stressful enough. And so that will happen. And then slowly the restaurant started to um, close down, you know, the restrictions started to come in more and more, you know. And then, then eventually, obviously, a week or two later, it was no restaurant at all. At that point, we just went, you know what, <laughs> we don't know when this is going to open again. Sean had been saying, I'm giving it a year and then I've got to get out of the restaurant. I'm not, my heart's wow. not anymore. He was saying that already. So we, I'd kind of gone, okay, we'll give it a year. Um, he was like, I'm too old to do this. I've got, we've got kids. It's just crazy. There wasn't, you know, restaurants, are, it's really hard to make any money in restaurants, which is why we did all the other stuff. And so... I think we just went, let's just do it, you know. Like we've, we've only, but why, why not now? Like, let's just get out. But the, the contract was about, our lease was about to re, be renewed, so we just, in June, so we just went, let's just get out. And um, we just took that sort of leap of faith because everything was crazy. Um, the bakery was doing really well um, with COVID. Everyone was sort of, well, we know once they couldn't go out to dinner, everyone wanted to eat baked goods. It was Easter um, we put all our energy in that and kind of the rest is history, really. Like, I mean, there's more to it than that, but <laughs> it was a, re- a real relief, I have to say. Um, it's been stressful moving weddings because we had to move all the venues. We've had legal letters come at us. We've had all sorts of stuff, you know, dealing with brides who are misplaced or want re- refunds. Mm. It's been expensive. Like, it's it's been stressful, really stressful. But um, ultimately, I know the way I feel now that it was definitely the right move. Um, I'd been able to, well, Sean's back doing pastry, so he's rolling croissants at 3am every morning and loving it. He's happy, he's healthy. We're home to pick up the kids from school. Um, I mean, I obviously still do weddings, so there is that, but I still love it, so that's fine. Um, The bakery is a beautiful little business. We produce amazing quality produce. People love it. It's kind of becoming a bit of a place that you have to visit when you come to Orange and the customers are happy and I don't know it's just it's you know I'm glad we did the restaurant and it was a dream that we both had and um, it was amazing to do that and we loved it while we did it but the timing was just perfect and I think our business now is more exciting and more what we should be doing at this point in our business and we're still in hospitality we're still feeding people we're still cooking we're still you know making people feel happy but it's just a different different way of life so yeah it's in a nutshell before (laughs) before we dig a bit deeper into (laughs) what you guys are doing now and the life change that you've had take us back to the early days and and when you first started Racine and and what you imagined it to be compared to this sort of beast that it became look um when Sean and I first met we were both working at uh, the Grand National Hotel. I was in the bar. He was in the kitchen, and we went on a date to the Olympic Hotel. And that was back when they had paper cloths on the table. <laughs> and we sat there and we like did this little like, oh, wouldn't it be great? Let's dr- let's draw our dream restaurant. And we literally drew our dream restaurant, which we travelled and stuff. And then we, you know, we went to London and did the, that obligatory sort of stint over there. Came back to Orange to a friend's vineyard who had the dream restaurant that we'd drawn that bit of paper like I know that sounds ridiculous but I'm not lying that is exactly (laughs) like if manifesting exists that was it (laughs) um so we had this little restaurant it was just me and Sean and I think he had a kitchen hand and I had his cousin Mark from Dunny Doo who was an awesome waiter and (laughs) we ran the floor and like really we had no idea like we would just drink all the profits at the end of you know like all the wine at the end of the week like we were just having a great time it was really really fun and we were all working together and that was kind of, you know, great. That's our dream. But then we kind of realised, well, it needs to be more than this if we're going to make this sustainable. So we ended up moving to La Colline Vineyard where we opened Racine. Mm. And that was great. It did really well. I mean, you, you've you been there. You, I think you gave us one of our hats at one point. So, you know, like <laughs> it was a great little restaurant. We loved it. And when I was working on the floor, it was really fun and... Um, and then I had kids, which I still kind of worked on the floor a bit, like a lot of babies slept under the desk in the office. <laughs> so, But really, obviously, I, it's not sustainable for me to be restaurant managed. So it did start to grow from there. And, you know, Sean is one of those people, he never rests. He's always wanting to do something else and do better and bigger and 
you know so and I just probably naively kind of went okay whatever well, let's do it um, <laughs> and and it was fun and I love you know I love hospitality I love people and I, I just love that part of the industry so so it, it was great um, for a long long time um, when our son Edward was two which is about nine years ago he um, we opened the bakery because Sean had this idea that he wanted to open a little hole in the wall that served amazing croissants um, he spent the whole of my pregnancy testing croissants, which made me vomit every time I smelt one. So he'd really been looking at that and he was wanting to do it. So he did it. And, um, you know, and then that sort of grew from there. And, you know, um, we did that. Little, I, I just said to him, I don't want to actually know what you're doing. Just do it and I'll, you know, I'll deal with the bills and the, all the logistics later. You just do what you have to do. And that's kind of how we roll, Sean and I. So... Um, yeah, so that's we did start from a little tiny dream of just us in a restaurant, you know, me and him against the world kind of thing, just give, doing beautiful food and looking after people. And, and essentially that's what we do now, you know. It's sort of gone back to that a little bit. Tell us a bit about uh, running a restaurant in the country and what the lure f- for you was in the first place and, and, and the challenges involved in um, having longevity like you guys have had. Mm. Um. Look, um, running a restaurant in the country is a beautiful, beautiful dream and it's a lovely thing to do, but it's really, really hard, you know, even in a place like Orange. Um, it's probably different now that COVID's hit because people are coming to the country more and Orange is absolutely booming. Um, but when you see us, you know, people go, oh, we can never get in. It's like, well, that's because you only want to come on Saturday. You know, it, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. It's, it's lovely and, the, the, you know, you get to – we live next door to – farmers and you know we got to meet all the producers and the vineyards were in the restaurant all the time and so we really you're really a part of it which is um which is wonderful and you know you you know your customers you get so many regulars but it is it's tough you know because your regulars don't you know they only come out on weekends um at that point tourists were only coming here on weekends and um you know even as i said even in a town like orange so um, getting staff is was really hard. Again, I think that's probably changed since COVID. But um, yeah, it's tough. It's it's lovely, and um, and you can obviously do a lot more with your restaurant in terms of, um, oh, I guess, you know, the space. You know, like I said, our kitchen was three times the size of the restaurant. So, you know, we, we were able to do a lot more. But it, it's it is tough, and um, it really takes a toll. I think on you as people like you're working hard and you're constantly having to be relevant and um, reinvigorate the business and 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 think of new ideas to get people in which we, we were good at I think and and we did have a good business by the end but but it's exhausting I you know I will say <laughs> tell us a bit about orange it's a real destination and an absolutely stunning um, town in autumn when all the leaves are the different colours. It's it's known for some pretty amazing wines too. What's so great about Orange and the produce around it? Look, Orange is such a beautiful town. It's been um, you know developing itself as a food area for long before we even got here, which was 15 years ago. So um, I think Food Week is having its 30th anniversary this year. So um, it definitely is a really amazing place to be if you're in the food industry. And I think that is only even just starting to really hit its stride now. You know, like it's, there's some great chefs here. There's some great restaurants. Um, not as, not as probably as much produ- produce as you would think. I think when we got here, there was probably more. There was rabbits and snails and all sorts of stuff and venison, which is still here. But, um, but even so, you know, we have beautiful orchards and, um, all that sort of stuff as well. And obviously the wine is really taking off here. There's a lot of great cellar doors and some great wine. Like you won't get a bad wine in Orange, I can tell you. You know, it's, it's really great. It's, and, the, and it is a beautiful place to visit. So when people come here, you often hear them say, um, I can't believe how beautiful Orange is. It. And it really is because it does have those four seasons. You get lovely mild summers, which are warm enough that you can kind of be in summer and then right now it's starting to turn so it's getting get crisp in the crisp evenings and the leaves are starting to turn and it'll be just glorious in about a month or two um and then you get cold winters it snows and then spring is just it's green and lush and there's a lot of sort of english trees and english gardens and stuff so that really it's it's a beautiful place to live um 
it's affluent, so there's um, good schools, um, beautiful houses. It's just a great, you know, if there's money in the town, which always makes a town great to be in because people can open cafes and things. So it's, yeah, it's a beautiful place to live. You mentioned that you and Sean met at Grand National and the seeds were sown to eventually <laughs> uh, open Racine. But what led you to a career yeah. in hospitality? Um, really, by default, when I, I went to <laughs> uni and studied journalism, <laughs> <funnily enough. laughs> um, and I just got, I got my first job at the AJC working in their functions department and then I got pub work. I worked at a few places like the Lord Dudley in, in Paddington for a long time where I met Alex Avramides, who owned the Grand National, and I went there with him when he bought that. Um, and, yeah, I just loved it. I liked the people. I love the buzz. I really like the, the adrenaline you get when you're busy and you're serving, and I, you know, I get that adrenaline now from making lots of coffees you know, for people and getting that quickly and beautifully. Like, I love that. Um, so... Um, yeah, I've sort of lost the, the, the train of that question. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's how I got into hospitality. So I've always been in hospitality. Um, I th- you know, we met there. Um, Sean was, you know, really at, sort of getting into his career, like, seriously at that point. And, um, and then we, I went and worked for Keystone Group, um, doing their marketing and PR for Cargo Bar for a few years and then we went mm. overseas and I got out of hospitality a little bit there because I was driven by the dollar. I wanted to travel and I wanted to make a bit of money so we could have a, an interesting life over there but Sean stayed in hospitality as a chef and learnt heaps there So and then came back and just did a restaurant. I mean it was just sort of a natural thing to do. I couldn't think of doing anything else to be honest. The vast majority of restaurants in Australia are family run small establishments and uh, not unlike what you guys do, what, what's what's been the challenges and the joys of working with a with a partner in a business like that? Um, well, I guess we get on pretty well. We we have um, mostly the same. Well, we basically want the same thing. We approach it from different aspects. Um, I don't know. People who've worked with us will probably say we're pretty feisty. Like we have some pretty cracking fights in the past. <laughs> we've <been> a lot. <laughs> um, uh, you know, but we just, but we're quick and we're they're short and short, short and sharp. You know, our fights they're like, and then we're we're done. But we really want the same thing. Um, we both really love the industry and we love food and we love. Pe- I love people. Sean loves food, so you know it works well. We complement each other. I don't try and muscle in on his territory, and he doesn't try and muscle in on mine. But when we need each other, we can be quite good advice. So. It's not it's not easy. I don't think a lot of people could work together, but we're pretty we're pretty good friends, and we want the same thing. So we we balance each other out nicely. You guys made a name for yourselves with one of the best regional restaurants in the country, but also for the amazing events. And you talked about weddings and all those weddings that you've put on. But what makes a great event, and and what's some of the challenges from your perspective in creating those experiences? Um, look, I think it's, it's, you've got to be you've got to love people you really do um you've got to make sure that everything you're doing have attention to detail um one of the things well i've got two sayings when it comes to giving good hospitality and, and events particularly is good enough is not good enough and everything needs to be abundant so you know it's got to look like it's You've got to have the, the, the widest tablecloths. You've got to have the biggest flower arrangements. You've got to have groaning food. Like, you, you've got to... Um, everything you do has got to be exactly the same way. You know, you've got to... We met, the tables have to look perfect. Um, and I think it's that willingness to just be like... To understand that sometimes, you know, on a, on a bride's day, it's their biggest day of their life, you know. So you've got to make sure that you are there and, and caring for them as much as possible, which has been one of the biggest challenges of COVID because, A, we've had to move venues. Mm. Um, We've had to move a lot of dates. Some people have had three venues now and three different dates and they're still with us and they still love us. And I think it's that care. You've got to be there for them. And, you know, it might seem trivial at the time, but you just have to make sure that you care about them and do take as much stress and workload off them as possible. And I think that's why... We've had such a successful business. 
obviously the food and wine is is a big part of what we do as well you know we offer some of the best food in events i think that you will ever find you know for big events Mm -hmm. um, because we offer restaurant style food um but i also think that care and um the fact that we will go you know if you came to me i just say you don't have to lift a finger we'll do all that for you you just sit back and relax you know as much as you can um we'll do everything for you and i think that's a really big part of it we're in hospitality and that's something i say to people we're in hospitality we have to be hospitable that's really important um when in any aspect of our industry but particularly weddings and events because you know it's it's they're paying a lot of money and it's their biggest day of their life so yeah yeah i guess that's at the top of successful yeah at the top of the show, you talked about how busy you guys were and how big your offering became and how many people were involved. Yeah. Um, but it's all been stripped back now and you're under under one roof. But you have a couple of elements to what you're doing. Can you, can you paint a picture of what Racine is like these days? Sure. So we, have, we had a little bakery in town before come in the wall. Um, and then when the restaurant closed, there was a shop front that had been for Lee. So we went to them and said, look, um, can we rent that? So we're renting that now. We've put a, a kitchen and office upstairs from that, um, which we do all our take-home food and basically all the prep for our weddings and events, um, which we do off-site at various venues, but most particularly at the moment at, at Printy's Wines um, Packing Shed, which is beautiful. Um, so, And then downstairs at the back, which is actually on Summer Street, which if anyone knows Orange, on the main street um, it fronts onto, we're developing that into a ca- like a sit-down area for the bakery, which will hopefully be licensed as well. So you can still drink wine, but you can have a croissant and a champagne. So that's kind of where mm. we're at now. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm, it, I love all that sort of stuff too. So um, we also rent a massive warehouse where we keep like... <laughs> so much kitchen equipment that isn't being used right now (laughs) with the idea that maybe we'll need it again or maybe we'll sell it I don't know um a a huge baking oven that we've baked one loaf like load of bread in because you know it was brand new when we hit COVID and we we can't fit in the bakery now so that's the plan is that we will probably use that warehouse to be um a production space so we can grow the production of the bakery because it, it really is um, a great little business and, we're, you know, we're struggling to keep up the demand, which is a good problem. Um, and then we, yeah, so we do our weddings and events. We've started a little thing in COVID called Racing at Home, which is basically when you couldn't go to a restaurant, we'll bring the restaurant to you. Um, wow. And when it was really hard. Yeah, and it's, people absolutely love it. So we bring a chef and our uh, front of house manager, who's French, Bastion, uh, or two chefs, and we set the restaurant in your house. Um, the chefs will cook in front of you if you want to, um, if, you, if that's your kitchen, how your kitchen works, which most people's do. And then our waiters will serve you like a restaurant. We, pa- we set up, we serve you, and then we pack up and go, and you would never know we're there. And people just love it. It's so much fun. Um, it's really great for us. We get to and our, our waiters and our chefs are still challenged because they're still doing restaurant stuff. Um, mm. Sean doesn't have to do that part of it anymore, which is, which I think he's probably happy about. <laughs> um, but it's great. We've got a really good little team of people who've been with us for a long time, and they are really having a lot of fun. So, and, pe- and customers are loving it. We're, we're flat out. We actually have to turn people away at the moment with in- inquiries because wow. it's so popular. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> How are you feeling at the moment if you compare the way your life was a year ago and how busy uh, you and Sean were to, to now? How, how can you compare them? Um, look, it's, it's, a, it's a 180. I mean, obviously having a business is, is stressful no matter what you do, you know, it's it, because you're responsible for people. And we still have a lot of staff, but we've probably got half the staff that we had back then. Um, and... I think I was running on 100% anxiety. I was always worried about everything. Mm. Um, you know, having the pressure of, you know, landlords and sharing a space, which we were out at racing as well with a, with a vineyard. And that was, that, was a, that was always in the back of my mind, this isn't going to work, you know. It's, even though we've been here for 15 years or whatever it was, um, there were new owners and it was feeling sort of like, oh, this is not, you know, 
and I, I knew that Sean wasn't loving it and so I felt like I was really driving it all the time and um, it, it was just busy you know I, even just not having to worry about spelling mistakes in menus anymore is, is, is an awesome <laughs> thing. You know, little things like that that you sort of don't think at the time are a big deal, but they really are. And, you know, customers, keeping customers happy all the time and, you know, being busy one or two days a week and then trying to drum up business for the rest of the week. Like with the bakery, I just go in there. Sean's in there in the kitchen, so I know he and his, his guys in the kitchen are producing beautiful food. The weddings I run, like it's just as more sustainable. I, there's one of us managing each part of the business, which is really important. I think um, before COVID, I couldn't even get into the bakery. I was too busy. Mm. So having the time to do that from for the business is, has been amazing. Plus, we don't open Sundays and the bakery closes at 5.30. So one of us is always home with the kids, which is lovely. And we're both home at night. Um, you know, we've we've... we've got a social life again it's just a better way of life I mean I, I love restaurants but you know it really was and this is such a, a nicer way a pace of life and a much more secure way to have a business I guess because it is constantly the same it doesn't really change you know in terms of what's coming in we can plan what's coming what's happening with the racing at home and the wedding so we know what's happening there and it just feels much more in control and everyone's kind of working to their capacity but not overworked which is really lovely because you know ultimately you do have to care about your staff and when you're feeling like you're taking the piss which we mm. didn't mean to be but I did it, we just had great staff at the time who wanted to who wanted to work but I felt like I know you're saying you want to do this but this is terrible I, I, I feel terrible that you're working this hard to, to achieve all of this stuff that we've created so there's a huge level of guilt off my shoulders as well that I know people are working hard, but not not ridiculous, which is nice, you know, as a as a boss as well. There's been a lot of talk about the regions um, booming, and um, there's no uh, word of when international travel might open up again. You mentioned Orange has been busy just recently. What's what's your thoughts for the next year or two for for a region like Orange? Are you expecting a real uh, golden time? Yeah, look. Yes, how absolute has been. I think COVID was, you know, everyone kind of thought, oh, God, I've got to get out of the house. I've got to get it so soon as they could. Like, everyone was here. Um, mm. I'm, uh, winter is our busy time, though. So, obviously, that was winter was when everyone could travel. I think we'll have a really good year as well this year. Um, and I think Orange itself is a pretty exciting place to be and to visit. And, and the more people that come, the more people that want to come and, you know, and so on and so on. So I definitely think that um, we have got a really ex busy, exciting two years ahead of us, which is why I want to capitalise on it now <laughs> by opening the cafe for winter. Um, but in saying that, I think, I think it won't be um, ridiculously more busy than we had in in COVID, it was pretty crazy here. There were people everywhere. In fact, if you're going to get COVID, I'm surprised that we didn't get it in Orange, to be honest. There were people from Sydney everywhere. You know, obviously, where everyone was doing what they could do mm. um, in terms of social distancing. But you, you couldn't get accommodation. You couldn't get a, a booking at a cellar door. You, you know, you couldn't get a booking at a restaurant, hence racing at home. Um, it was just crazy, which was great because everyone felt that, you know, we'd had a couple of really terrible years. We'd had drought. We'd had bushfire so a lot of people couldn't make wine for two years and then the drought on top of that like it had been pretty not as bad as other places but we'd had a you know a couple of really tough years here so um it was nice i think i think it was nice for everyone especially the vineyards to be able to have that really busy time so yeah i think it will continue though with these changes that you've made and a greater life work balance um has it created the foundation for you to uh, have a longer career in the industry and become a bit more creative and do some things that you thought you weren't able to? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think my perspective and Sean's has, has matured in terms of what we want to get out of the business. Like when I first started weddings, I was getting married, you know, so it was really exciting. I loved doing weddings. And it was fun and I was into <laughs> weddings and Martha Stewart was my hero and all this stuff. Um, but now I'm in 40th season and, well, past that actually but um 
you know, we're at that point where I'm kind of like, oh, God, if I see any more Hessian lace, I'm going to vomit, you know. So I'm, <laughs> a bit, I'm a bit beyond that, which I still love to do them, but I think I can – I'm now um, – from my point of view, I'm more able to, like I'm wanting to do more kind of interesting events and and different sort of stuff and, and probably less weddings, more kind of parties, which, you know, um, from in terms of Sean, definitely. I think the, um, I think it, we, restaurants can be really soul destroying and I think, um, you know, he did really, really well for a long time and then we had some personal, pretty happened to us personally. We lost a baby in... 2013 so that was pretty hard and it really took a toll on him and I don't think he ever got his mojo back and I think he knew that and he'll kill me for saying this <laughs> if you just listen but um you know I think that was really really hard it was really hard in our business the business recovered but um but I don't think he ever got that you know young guys drive to just have a really busy restaurant and you know when you're in the country you don't have a really busy restaurant for most of the time so Mm. that he, he lost his mojo then and I think the bakery by being able to create beautiful pastries and tarts and you know just beautiful food again and have people enjoy it and buy it and he can he can be in there listening to them going oh my god these are the best croissants in out of Paris you know from, since I've been to Paris you know that sort of thing so that's given him um a real sense of achievement and purpose again and I can mm. see that in him and it's really really great for us, for us and I think that's that's kind of where we're going and I can see a, I can see some longevity in that I think the restaurant I remember thinking we were on holidays last year um, in January and thinking are we going to be doing this forever like am I going to be 75 <laughs> and and still trying to make some money out of a restaurant and I don't want to destroy people's dreams it was great and it gave us such a big stepping stone to where we are now we wouldn't be there without that great restaurant and we loved it for so long but mm. it was time for us and I think where we're headed now is 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 really exciting and and does have some longevity like I could still be quite happily the barista at the bakery when I'm 75 if they'll let me in <laughs> so I do feel like that I love it I love it so yeah it's great well, well uh, um, it's great to hear um, what's emerged from, from COVID for you guys. You're a real shining light for regional New South Wales and very much Thank look you. forward to hearing what's to come from you and Sean. Yeah, We'd, well, it's exciting. <laughs> we've loved having you on Deep in the Weeds today. Um, please keep in touch and we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much, Huck. Thanks for talking to me as well. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of Australia's HOSPO community, suppliers and producers in search of hope during this pandemic. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well. <laughs>